I came down to assist communities, coach really, um, in May of 2010, May 3rd. I had been through this once in Alaska, we'd been through all the lies, we'd been through all the deception. I thought maybe I could help folks here understand if you hear, we will make you whole, trust us, come out of BP's mouth. Sounds good, plan A, what's your plan B? I was shocked when I realized that May 3rd, that the people were working the in-situ burn team offshore, they were not using respirators. They were getting the respiratory problems, the central nervous system problems, dizziness, nausea, headache, um, chest uh, rashes, um, same as we had 21 years earlier with Exxon Valdez. I, and I just, I, I couldn't believe that. Here we are. It's like a time warp or something. Um, so I started sharing that here are the common symptoms of oil spill exposure. There's basically four categories. Respiratory problems. So asthma, bronchitis, cold and flu-like symptoms. Your body only has so many ways to say, I'm sick, I'm in a dangerous situation, get me out of here, okay? The difference is if it's a, well, for example, Exxon Valdez, I did a survey 13 years later, and one person told me, you know, I thought I had the Valdez crud, cold, in 1989. I didn't think I would have it for 13 years. That is not normal. That is not a normal cold. Um, that is chemical illnesses caused by breathing too many chemicals in the air, getting them on your skin, getting them through your food, ingestion, inhalation, uh, skin. These are routes of exposure. So, respiratory problems, central nervous system problems, headaches, dizziness, nausea, uh, blurry vision, um, vertigo, uh, seizures. Okay, that was a little bit abnormal. Brain fog, memory loss. Uh, forgetfulness, um, that is all considered uh, central nervous system problems if they don't clear up. I mean, okay, and then um, skin problems, big nasty rashes that people were getting, and finally the blood disorders, um, kind of bleeding out of every orifice. Um, that's not really normal either. So, and then there were other things, pain in the joints, um, um, hair loss, but this is common. This is common to oil spill exposure, especially common, we learned, with the dispersant use. Dry up the sebaceous oil glands in your head, your hair falls out, okay? So people would go to their doctors and their doctors would sometimes say this is chemical illness, but what they would write would be mm, heat stroke, food poisoning, staph infection, and then they would treat with multiple rounds of antibiotics. And the thing is, that's not good. If it doesn't clear up, then maybe they should be looking at a misdiagnosis and try something else. Um, and that just didn't really happen down here. So one of the things that um, I'd like to, uh, I'm back in this region again to do is share this new project called ALERT, which is a locally empowered response team. And it has a hub of people, not just me, that bring national skill sets. So whether training or education, um, whether it's training for doctors or training for ordinary people to recognize clues that maybe your sinuses are getting stuffy because the wind has been blowing from the Gulf. Look, your dog is having problems too. You know, there's clues. So it's been four plus years now. And if the oil is uh, in people's bodies, and I'm assuming it is, it is not going to be in the blood at this point. It is not. That was a 2010 phenomenon because it was so much pollution in the air that you couldn't help but breathe these chemicals. And once you breathe them, right into your bloodstream they go. And then you exhale, but your next breath is still equally polluted. So your body was pretty saturated with this stuff. The trouble is hurricanes came around in December, early January, and the air cleared up relative to what it had been in the summer 2010. So people began to feel a little bit better um, because the oil that was in their bodies parked. It parked in their tissue. So now it's an entirely different test that needs to be done. Alert is down to 
share with people what's appropriate environmental monitoring, what's appropriate community health monitoring, including for individuals. Hopefully we get a chance to educate the doctors so they know what appropriate tests to take. Not only are you looking for what chemicals are in your body, it's a chemical reactivity screen where you're looking at how actively those chemicals have bound to your tissue because the tighter they bind and the more that bind, the more likely you are to be having these immune, uh, uh, immunofunction failures or, or problems, um, long-term uh, problems stemming from your initial exposure. So different tests is appropriate now. So train the doctors, train the general uh, communities, the public, uh, um, environmental monitoring, community health monitoring, follow-up tests, uh, health surveys, and then uh, our other partner, our labs and technical writers that are working to, to get this information, interpret the data, and get it back out and share it with people. Here's what we could be doing differently. Um, that's what, um, I'm down here for that. So alertproject.org should go online next week, so it should be live.